Hi, I'm Gus Hansen. I'm playing at Full Tilt Poker. I'm playing 50 cent, one dollar at the Deerfoot table. Ready to go. Auto post my blind here. I'm in the big blind and I think since this is a 50 cent, one dollar table, I'm gonna try and see pretty much every flop that I can. Except if there's some crazy action I might have to fold the 9-4 offsuit as here. It's not too crazy, four and a half dollar more, but it's obviously the right idea to fold the 9-4 offsuit. We are playing, a, let me count, a nine-handed table, and I'm just going to let this one go, keep my $99 in front of me. Basically, when I sit down at a table, I like to figure out who am I up against. It is a little bit harder on the internet, obviously, because when you're actually sitting at the table, at a live table and a tournament, you're able to look people in the eye. Here I'm looking at nine avatars and I don't know if it's the old lady from Kentucky or a young crazy guy from New York or somebody freezing their butt off in Alaska. Anyway, I got the King Jag offsuit and we got the 1074 of spades on the flop. That's not really me. No pair, no flush draw, up against two opponents. You just don't want to mess with that. And I'm slowly losing all my money. Started with 100 down to $98, but I, st I still have a chance here. All right, so we got the panda, the surfer, the nurse, Dracula, the fish, the dog, the donkey, and the clown and then little old me with a king eight of diamonds. I'm obviously going to play this hand. Even for a raise, I was going to say, that's five and a half dollars. I think I'm going to see what's going on. The clown never has a hand. Never. So basically, in a nine-handed ring game, no limit hold'em, I think your preferred way to play should be fairly tight. There's nine players around the table. There's no antes like you have in big tournaments. So basically there's only a dollar and a half in the pot. When you start out with a hundred dollars like I did, basically you can f afford to see a lot, a lot of hands before you have to make any big decisions. Obviously I put five and a half dollar in with a king eight suited. Probably not a good play in the long run, but I do love to see flops. Okay. Once again, I did not connect with a queen, queen, seven, and I got uh, the initial raise a bet out, and I got two opponents behind me, so just time to let it go. I know some people also advocate very loose play in uh, these kind of situations. Just basically try and see each and every flop and hope for hitting the crazy big flop where you flop trips or something like that and maybe get a big payoff. Here I got the two jacks. And Dragon Potts looks like he's uh, contemplating. Maybe a raise. No, just the quiet call. And Quasak, Quasak, with only $21. That's a good flop. I love the continuation bet. Uh, let's see. I usually don't bet the pot size in these kind of spots, but $6 was enough to take it down and uh, back close to even. Jack-7 offsuit, a limper, I'm going to limp. Once again, see the flop. And I should obviously, instead of talking all the time, I should be paying attention to who is playing what. Is somebody around the table playing each and every hand? Is somebody just sitting there waiting for the nuts? Or is somebody trying to bluff each and every hand like me? Here the 886, I don't see any reason why any of these two players should have anything. So take charge and actually I should mention an, another rule that I sometimes apply even when I play the big games is if my opponents check two times in a row, they usually mean it. 
It's because they don't have anything. So if my opponents check two times in a row, I force myself to bet no matter what I have. And actually, I think very small sample size, but I think I have turned out with a profit just following that little funky rule that, hey, if they check, they don't have anything. Okay? See, just like I did here. I checked, I don't have anything, which is not quite true. I have the gut shot king, I have two over cards, and I have the backdoor flush draw, and I could have started with the best hand. So I was actually contemplating calling the $12. There was 1855 in the pot, calling 12 with what could theoretically be the best hand with the ace queen. Yeah, I think I should just fold. Okay. Oh my god, I was up against the two kings and the two aces. I was in bad, bad shape. Against one opponent, I might have called the $12. But against two opponents with a bet and a raise, it was just an easy lay down. And ba basically, August slow played his two aces. He wanted to get the extra action. It's a little bit dangerous way to play the two aces, especially in a nine-handed game. If you have two aces having too many opponents, you might only get action post-flop when they actually have you beat. So, little dangerous way to play. Turned out good, but his opponent had two kings. So basically, had he p played with a re-raise uh, before the flop, he would have gotten all the action he wanted anyway. Uh, obviously, the two kings couldn't get away from it, so it kind of played out very straightforward. One thing I mentioned about noticing things that happens around the table is very important. As I said, it's easier to do in a real life table where you can actually see the persons you're playing against. But obviously on the internet you can also take notes of this and that. And basically August West limped in early position with two aces. He just called the raise from Keto Worst. So basically that was a little I could say untraditional way of playing aces. Uh, so I'm definitely making a mental note of that. So next time he's limping early, it could be the same kind of scenario. So ju just watch out for those things where people play something out of the ordinary and uh, yeah, just make a note so maybe you can use that information for some later hands. Heads up with a king deuce offsuit. My mama told me to fold that hand. I haven't listened to her for the last 10 years, so maybe it's time to do so. So I'm just going to fold. King 4 suited. Uh, much better than the, the King Deuce. Actually, if you do percentages, the difference between King 4 suited and King Deuce off suit is actually not very big. It's very minuscule. But what makes a big, big difference, in, at least in my opinion, is the fact the playability of the hand, the King 4 suited, just, you just have so many more options because you can put pressure on your opponents when you get the two spades on the flop. You don't really have anything, but you do have a draw. And just being able to put pressure on your opponent with draws makes the suited hand so much stronger than the non-suited, even though if you check it on the computer, the percentages, the winning percentages, are really not that much different. But you will pick up uncontested pot because you're able to put pressure on with that plus draw with the straight draw. So connected hands obviously go up in value, suited hands go up in value, and non-suited, non-connected, they're just not that good. Okay, so here we have a beautiful non-suited, non-connected jack six of spades, so the right place to fold, that's why I call on the button. Uh, so far one opponent, three opponents, the 10-7 deuce, and see if we can apply that rule that if all three players check the first time, I'm just going to check my no draw, no nothing. But if they check again on the turn, I'm going to try and take charge and no. I didn't get that lucky, so just let it go. No uh, reason to fight City Hall. Just let it go. See the next hand. And let's see, King-10, a little bit better, obviously a big feature in any kind of poker, unless you're playing low ball, which means low ball means the lowest hand will win. Big cards, 
are important, especially in Hold'em where you only have two, two cards. King-10 is in the higher range. It's not a great hand, but it's above average, especially when I'm um, only up against three opponents. Once again, I'll just check. Hope the dragon checks behind me, and then I'll make my stab at the turn. And once again, check folding is fine. All right, I think we're going to play a couple of more hands. A7. That's actually another interesting thing, the ace. Everybody loves the ace. The ace is admittedly the biggest card and hold him in a bunch of other games, but I think people overestimate the ace. One reason being that if you play the ace, everybody else also plays the ace, and if you have a bad kicker like I, like I do here, the a7 offsuit, Chances are, if, he does, if your opponent has an ace, he has a better kicker than you. You don't really know where you're at. I actually, a lot of times, prefer other hands than the ugly aces, the ace-5 offsuit and hands like those. I just don't think they play very well, whereas a 10-7 a might play much better than the ace-3. And the difference in strength are not that big. The, so. We'll see if the, I fare better with the 10 7 than the ace 7, actually. Okay, I play very tight. No, not too many continuation bets, so when they both check, which I'm pretty sure they will, I'm going to bet $2 and try and take it down. Okay. Forma we paid the two dollars and it does look to the naked eye like I'm drawing completely dead here. And the question is, can I take this pot down? It is no limit hold'em. Sometimes when you put a lot of pressure on your opponent, you can take it down. So I'm actually gonna try and fire three barrels. This is not recommended. You should not do this at home. And <laughs> I will say I see absolutely no chance that he's going to fold this hand. Absolutely no chance. But I'm going to hit myself on the head if I don't do this and he would have folded. There's no chance he's going to fold an ace. What did he call with an... There's, I just don't see it. Okay, I'll do it anyway. There's no chance he's going to... Oh, there was a chance. Sometimes... I, I stuck out a path. I was going to fire three barrels. I almost talked myself into not doing it just because I just didn't see a way how he called the bet on the flop, the pot size bet on the turn, and then to fold on the river. But uh, obviously he did. I have found myself, actually I just played a big event at the World Series of Poker where I bet on the flop, a total bluff. I bet on the turn, an even bigger bluff, and I was going to fire the third bullet on the river unless an ace turned up. It just looked like he had some kind of acey hand. He didn't want to let me take it away. The ace came on the river and I chickened out. I didn't make the bluff on the river. It turned out he had absolute bottom pair, no kicker, and I would have gotten away with it. And I kind of had to hit myself on the head because I, I basically chickened out. I kind of put him on a hand in a spot where I couldn't really be sure, and not making that bet uh, ended costing me a lot because it was already a big pot at that time. All right, I'm, I'm going to follow the same path here, bet out $8, and I'm just going to do the same three barrels. Obviously, when you do three barrels, bluff, 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 you also should do it sometimes with a big hand. I did flop two pair. I think I might get a lot of action if he holds two queens. Uh, and I think this, this could be it. He's raising to, th uh, to 30. I have to call 22 more. Also, this would be time to look at your chip stack. If I put in $22 more, I'm left with 62, and there's more than 62 in the pot. So really the right way to go if you do believe you have the best hands, which I do. I think I'm up against an overpair, so it's just time to go. Let's see if I'm right. He might fold an overpair, which I really don't mind. He still has 
a fair amount of outs with an over pair. He can hit a seven. He can hit running pair like 10-10. Or he can obviously hit his queen, assuming he has two queens. Obviously, I wouldn't know for sure. It could be the flush draw. There's many possibilities, but it just looks like the two pair is ahead at this time. And if it wasn't, I don't think he would spend that much time. It was the two queens. What do you know? There's the queen. Gus Hansen is just out of here. I lost my hundred dollars. I made the right decision against the two queens. Obviously, that was a lucky guess. He could have as well have the ace jack of spades or two tens, but I was definitely ahead. He did have the backdoor spade draw, so I was probably, uh, I think, about a 70 30 favorite. But in your poker career, you're going to lose many of those. So I think that was it. My $100 over and out from here.